Well, police in Bradford are planning to crack down on fake aggressive beggars harassing female motorists and Christmas shoppers. They're believed to be working a shift system and local councillor David Green said one big ongoing issue is begging at traffic lights. It's becoming increasingly worrying. As a result, West Yorkshire police said several of the city centre and traffic lights beggars had already been slapped with criminal behaviour orders. Now, the run-up to Christmas is often a time to help those less fortunate than ourselves. But following these new reports of fake homeless gangs, should we stop giving money to people begging on the street? To debate this now, I'm joined by a charity founder and independent candidate for Mayor of Greater Manchester, it's Nick Buckley, and I've got former Coronation Street actor, star, Sean Ward. Both of you, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Um, Sean, I'll, I'll start with you. I'll just ask you that, really. Should, should we stop giving money to people out on the streets this Christmas? Definitely not. I can't even believe we're having this conversation, to be honest. I think um, I think the police in this country have got priorities completely wrong, if you want my opinion. In Manchester, I think on the 3rd of December, um, when we had that first bit of frost, there was a homeless man found dead on the street. And I think it's extremely important, one, to keep cash in the system, and two, to support people that are in this situation, especially now. Mm. All right, uh, Nick, I mean, I suppose that's something that maybe many people would agree with your views. We've chatted about this almost every year now for the last two, three years. This subject becomes very emotive. So we need to drill down to what we're, what we're trying to ask here. The question is, should we allow our fellow citizens to live and die in the streets? And the answer to that is no. The bit about handing cash out isn't an answer to the problems those people have got. All that does, it makes us feel better. Look at me, I'm fantastic. I've dropped a five in that person's paper cut because I'm drunk. I'm going to go home now and phone my mum and tell my mum, you're right, mum, I am an amazing person. But that person was homeless yesterday, the homeless when you give him a fiver, and the homeless tomorrow, it changes nothing. We, we put coins in paper cups that makes us feel better, right. and it doesn't end the problem. Sure. One of the problems that we have at the moment is these kind of organised gangs that are, you know, whether you'd call them well, from whatever part of the world they might be, maybe they would identify as some members of the Roma Gypsy community, things like that, right, who are not your kind of traditional street homeless. Uh, and then even when you give them money, it's not going to them. You're kind of funding criminality, I don't know, your views. Yeah, I get that. You've got, there's obviously, there's levels of discernment needed and, you know, People are in too much of a rush these days, but if you went and spent five minutes with someone on the streets, I'm sure you'd be able to find out if it's genuine or not. And, you know, most Romanians in Manchester will give you a rose for a pound. So it's, there, is, there is an exchange there. But, mm. you know, everybody in this country needs to admit to themselves, regardless of what, you know, putting five pounds in somebody's cup, I don't think it's narcissistic. I think it's actually quite a decent thing to do to someone because everyone is two paychecks away from being homeless in this country. 2.1 million people use food banks in 2022. 3 million people use food banks this year. It's going to be much worse next year. So, you know, a lot of people on the streets, and it's the same as, like, say, say when people say, oh, I don't want to give him money because they'll use it for drugs. Like, mm. I get, I, I understand that. But at the same time, that fix might save that person's life. I, I've seen alcoholism destroy my family. And if they just stop drinking alcohol, they, 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 they're not going to be able to survive. Mm. So there's two ways to look at it. Not everything's so black and white. Mm. No, uh, fair enough. Um, I suppose another way around it, uh, Nick, might be, look, if you don't want to give them money or you're worried about that contributing to a drug or alcohol addiction, you, know, you can go and you buy them a sandwich or a coffee or something, no? No, because that doesn't work either. So let me just address Sean's point there. All right. So when we're talking about handing money over... I did a, a survey, you know, for people who don't know, I've got two decades working with rough sleepers, two decades. When I work for Manchester Council, I should chair a multi-agency panel, and then when I set up a charity, I've set up charity projects, getting people off the streets, getting rough sleepers jobs. I know what I'm talking about. So in, in Manchester City Centre, something like two-thirds, 70% of all beggars you see are not even rough sleeping. They've got accommodation, they're begging for money for drugs. The Roma community... Uh, that's their full-time job. That's why they've come to this country. It's a full-time job begging. They begged in their own country before they came here. That's a cultural issue. But then talking about the food, I say to these people all the time, people say, I'm not going to give money because they're going to buy drugs. It'll kill them. So I buy them a meal deal. Now, what you need to understand is buying someone a meal deal sounds perfectly acceptable. But 
giving someone food on the street stops them then accessing a support center where they can sit down and have a hot meal. It's only where they're in the support center can the social workers, support workers start on picking their lives and helping them and getting them a better life. Mm. Sean, can I, can I just ask you, I know that there's been a couple of headlines recently that I think you, you know, kind of want to push back on a, a little bit. Is that right? So you, as someone who has been quite honest in the past about being quite close to the breadline, um, do you, you've got a couple of minutes, do you want to maybe just elaborate a bit on that? Because it's quite a personal issue for you, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think the press tried to run that I was homeless, but I've never been homeless. You know, I moved into my mate's house, so the, the, you can't even define me as homeless. And I think it's quite insulting to people that are homeless Mm. Um, to say that I was because I've got an amazing family and I've got an amazing mates that would always pop me up. But, you know, if we bring it back to the topic, I think it comes comes down to, you know, it's like you can't just you can't just walk past somebody. I, I just don't agree with it. Even if, you you know, a conversation sometimes might be enough, like I said before, just even a hello, but I think people are in such a rush these days. But, yeah, buying, buying a meal deal, I understand what... Um, sorry, I've forgotten Nick. Um, my man. Nick. Nick. I understand what you're saying about not getting people into the system, but it's still a vicious cycle that they're in. And a lot of people on the streets, I understand you've got beggars that you, I don't even like that term. I can't even believe we're using that term, but I will say homeless people. And, you know, some of these people are running away from sexual abuse or from, from dark, dark stuff. The reason why they end up where they are is not, is not something that's just innocent. So you can't just start all... all running headlines now saying we can't give money to homeless people. I think it's mad that they've run that. It must have been a slow news day to put that as a headline, in my opinion. Mm, oh, and, and to even put, put me in it. <laughs> well, there you go. But, uh, Nick, final word to you on this, mate. We're a bit pressed for time. Go on. Do you want to come back to any of that? Quickly, I, believe, I, I agree with almost everything Sean said, there, apart from the end bit. Just because I don't want people to give beggars and rough sleepers money and food... You're quite right. I want you to sit down and talk to them, have conversations. Don't walk past and ignore them because they're human. It makes them, it degrades them even more when you ignore what they're asking you for. Saying, sorry, I don't have any change. Sit down, talk to them, find out what help they want, and then you take responsibility and do some Google searches. Find some help for them. Don't walk by and ignore them. All right, look, both of you, thank you very much. Uh, good luck to you both. Have a great Christmas. Uh, take care thank and stay you. safe. That's uh, independent candidate for the mayor of Greater Manchester, Nick Buckley, and former Corrie star, Sean Ward. Right. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and comment. And if you like what I'm saying about running for mayor of Greater Manchester, then stick around. Tell your family, tell your friends. It's the only way I'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement. So be part of that movement and hit that bell. Thanks.